Okay, today we're going to do some examples with uh, simplifying some square roots of negative numbers. All right, now before we get started here, we uh, probably need to recall that the square root of negative 1 is i. All right, and then any time that you're uh, simplifying square roots uh, by hand, not putting them in a calculator, it helps if you've got your list of all your little perfect square roots. All right, these, if you use, like, say, square root of 16, that's the biggest number. It's going to just make your simplifying go a lot faster. So I've wrote all of our little perfect square roots over here so that we've got a list to choose from. All right, so to start with, um, I think I wanted to do an example of we're trying to simplify the square root of negative 250. All right, now, first step, you are going to want to, uh, to get rid of the negative. All right, we know that the square root of negative 1 is i. So I can simply take the square root of negative 1. It's going to get rid of the negative sign underneath, and it's going to pull an i out in front. So then I can break this up into i times the square root of 250. Okay, and I'm just kind of separating it because I'm kind of going to break this up into a little tree. All right, now this i, I'm just going to, I've taken care of him. He's just going to come straight down, or I can just leave him there and be done with him. The square root of 250. All right, if I want to make the, when I break this up, if I want my tree to be the smallest that it can be, I want to pick the biggest perfect square root that I can find that goes in to 250. All right, so I'm going to ask myself, does 250 divide by 4? Does 250 divide by 9? Does 250 divide by 16? All right, and I'm going to pick the biggest one. All right, clearly square root of 25 goes into 250. So I'm going to choose the square root of 25 when I do this. So square root of 25 times square root of 10. 25 times 10 is 250. And I pick this first one being the biggest one from this list to make my tree as short as possible. Now, I know the square root of 25. That's 5. And then I can't do anything with the square root of 10. All right. Now, that makes your tree relatively short. I've got an i that has come out, I've got a 5 that has come out, and then the square root of 10 is still there. So when I combine those into a nice neat answer, I've got 5i square root of 10 as my simplified answer. All right, now to do another example, that is, that is just a straightforward example of simplifying that square root and it's got a negative underneath. All right, if we add a little bit to it, I can make it a little more complicated, I can add and subtract some of these square roots. All right, so let's look at something like the square root of negative 18 minus the square root of negative 8. All right, so I've thrown in a little uh, subtraction in with this one. Okay, now if you recall, whenever you add or subtract radicals, they have to be like radicals. And right now, they are not. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that square root of negative 1, and I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to pull it out, and it's going to become an i square root of 18 minus, I'm going to do the exact same thing there because the square root of negative 1 is i. So I'm going to pull out an i and make that square root of 8. Okay, now I need like radicals in order to be able to add these. So I'm going to focus on just this 18 right here. I want the biggest perfect square root that I can do in my head to break this up into. So I'm going to choose square root of 9 because I can do that one really easy in my head. 9 times 2 is 18, so that'll be square root of 2. Square root of 9, I can do. It's a 3. Square root of 2, I can't do anything with. I'm going to leave. Okay, so simplifying this, I've got the i that's come out, I've got the 3 that's come out, and then there's the square root of 2 that's still there. So this negative square root of negative 18 simplifies down to 3i square root of 2. All right, minus, now I'm going to work on the second part of this. Okay, the i's already come out. I'm going to try to break up that square root of 8. Now I want to pick the biggest perfect square root that I can come up with, which is going to be a square root of 4 times the square root of 2. All right, I know the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2, can't do anything with that. Okay, I've got the i that has come out, I've got the 2 that has come out, and then I've got the square root of 2. Putting all of those three things together, I'm going to have a 2i radical 2. Okay, now I've simplified this part, I've simplified the first part, I now have like radicals, so I can now add these, or in this case, subtract them, but you can add or subtract once you get like radicals. 
All right, putting those together, 3i, I'm going to su subtract the coefficients, basically, what's sitting in front of the radical 3i minus 2i. It's just going to give me an i or a 1i radical 2. So you can apply this idea of simplifying the square roots with negatives in it with a little bit additional material in the, in the problem. All right, now let's take a look at one more example. They might ask you to maybe take some square roots with negatives underneath and square them. All right, so they might give you something like a negative 1 plus the square root of negative 5 quantity squared. Okay, just a basic, you know, operation. All right, we know that something squared means to multiply that by itself. All right, so I might rewrite that just so that you can clearly see that that's a negative 1 plus the square root of negative 5 times a negative 1 plus the square root of negative 5. All right, now, before I get busy foiling here, because instantly you ought to recognize, oh, this is two binomials, I'm multiplying, I'm going to foil. I am going to foil, but not just yet. I want to get rid of that negative underneath those radicals. So I'm going to do that first before I foil. So I'm going to leave the negative 1 there. Uh, square root of negative 1 is an i, so I can pull an i out and make that square root of 5. I do the exact same thing on the second part, negative 1 plus I'm going to pull that negative square root out there, so I'm going to have an i square root of 5. Okay, now I can do FOIL. You've got to make sure and pull those negatives out of your radicals before you do your FOIL. Okay, so first terms, a negative 1 times a negative 1 is going to give me a 1. All right, outside terms, all right, a negative 1 times an i square root of 5 is going to give me a negative i square root of 5. Inside terms, I've got a i square root of 5 times negative 1. So that's going to give me a minus i square root of 5. All right, and then here, I'm not going to do this in my head. I'm going to show some more steps on this. I need to take i radical 5 times i radical 5. So I'm going to write it so that we can see where these numbers come from. i square root of 5 quantity squared. Okay, now, um, I looking in here, I've got some like radicals, so I can combine those two things. All right, so let's do that. The one out in front is just going to stay there. Negative and a negative is going to give me a minus 2i radical 5 from that right there. Now I need to focus on this over here. All right, and I'm again going to show all my steps here. I'm going to square the i and I'm going to square root, um, I'm going to square the square root of 5. So I'm going to have an i squared. Now, what am I really going to do? I'm going to write that over here. Square root of 5, quantity squared. All right, square root and square is going to kind of cross each other out. That's just going to give me a nice little 5 right there. All right, I could clean that up a little bit. All right, now, recall, i squared is a negative 1. Okay, anytime you've got an i squared in there, you got a negative 1. Okay, so that's going to make that a negative 5. So 1 minus 2i radical 5 minus 5. I can combine some like terms right here. Um, I want it in standard form, so 1 minus 5 is going to give me a negative 4 out in front, minus 2i radical 5. I'm in standard form there pretty much, so I can just leave my answer just like that. All right, just a few examples of how you would deal with a negative underneath a square root.